Check out today's work of fan art. This one's just badass. Ushiwaka Maru vs. Quetzalcoatl. It legit looks like it's been pulled right from a fighting game. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Thank you so much, Seth Lionheart. Welcome back to Otaku Daikun! Daichan here! Today, I'm here to do something that's long overdue from a channel like mine. It's a fake grand order waifu tier list! Considering I'm always conducting the holy waifu wars polls in my community tab, and how all the fate waifu totally dominate them, I figure it's about time I give my own input. Arranged before you is your typical tier list ranging from S to E, but I've gone ahead and clarified what each tier actually means to me. S is for my absolute favorite characters. They're so important that I would refuse to play FGO if I couldn't have them. A is for servants I love but aren't necessarily my favorites. I'd still desperately save up to roll for them, though. B is for servants that I would like to try to roll for if I had excess quartz, but wouldn't feel terrible over not getting. C is for waifu that, if they spooked me, I wouldn't really mind. I'd still probably level them up if they were good in battle, but it's not like I needed them. D is for waifu who, while I acknowledge they have an appeal, they just aren't my type. If they spooked me, I'd be disappointed. Lastly, E is for the waifu that I just don't like. I'd be downright upset to get spooked by them, and kinda just wish they'd buzz off. This is obvious, but all of the decisions I make here are my subjective opinion. There is no objectively perfect waifu, so long as there's one person out in the world who loves them. I'll be considering things like the character's design, their appearance, their personality, and maybe their use in battle if it's relevant. With each entry, I'll do my best to justify my decision, and it's totally fine if you disagree with me. Everyone's tier list will likely look different. Oh, and Estelfo's on the list as an honorary cutie. This list is for fun, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Anyway, let's get started! Ah, Mashu. While we don't have to roll for her, I certainly would because she's so adorable and attractive, especially in her first Ascension outfit. If I could give her an A+, I would. As for Artoria, considering she's my favorite character in all of fiction, she gets an instant S rank. I wouldn't be playing the game if not for her strong and noble pride as a king. Artoria Alter wasn't somebody I cared for in Fate Stay Night, but Teen Dooku really changed that for me. Not just for the kick-ass outfit, but also her less evil, yet more dominating presence. She gets an A. Artoria Lily was a nice bonus for new players. She's cute, but not as fierce as her older self. I'd probably still roll for her, though. She gets a B. Honestly, I have nothing against Daeon, but I've never really cared about them either. D. Um, While I don't so much care for her and FGO's combat, I absolutely loved her as a companion throughout Fate Extra and Extella. Her perky attitude and flair for the dramatic, plus that nice butt triangle, put her at an A for me. Altera is fairly similar. She was great in Extella, and I love her overall design. But in the long run, I could still live without her. She gets a B. Atalante is an adorable servant. She's a legit archer with a fun lore and good heart. That said, I feel like I could live without her. She gets a C. As for Steno and Uriel, eh, they're just kind of underwhelming to me. My greatest investment in them comes from their relationship to Medusa. Nothing wrong with them, but I'll give them a D. Medusa, on the other hand, is someone I definitely care for. She's not my ultimate waifu, but over the years since Dean's stay night, she's built up a rapport with me. She gets a B. Liz is an interesting dilemma. I don't really dislike her, but I find her overrated and annoying. I'll give her a D. Boudica is a really cool character. She's got a great lore with her hatred for Nero's army. Whether she's scantily clad or not, I appreciate her attitude. I'll give her a C. Ushiwakamaru. Now she's something special. While her sprite work and portrait don't do her justice, her insane badassery in the Babylonia anime easily put her at S tier. That underboob by itself should qualify as divine. Marie Antoinette is, well, she's cute, but I can't say I care much for her. She just doesn't leave much of an impact on me. I'll give her a D. 
Martha, on the other hand, is lovely. I love her outfit, I love her voice, I love her attitude. As far as an overall impression, though, I think I'll give her a B. Ah, uh, Medea. I used to hate how she covers her face, and I guess I still do. But she's gotten enough development over the years for me to really appreciate her. I just want her to be happy with Kuzuki, even though he's a killer. Plus, she loves Artoria. <laughs> Great taste. She gets a C. Jinke, well, she's also rather underwhelming. I feel like she's a friend point servant for a good reason. I'll give her a D. Matahari, on the other hand, is way too stunning for me to ignore. I love dancers, and she's just brilliant. She gets an A. Criminally underrated, I say. Carmilla, well, she's rather twisted and evil. I can understand if you're into femdom, but with that mask, I'm just turned off. In this form, she's too edgy. She gets a D. Kiyohime is pretty cute, but I personally don't have much of a connection with her. I appreciate her devotion, but she's perhaps a bit too traditional for me. She gets a D. Tamamo Cat is fun, but almost too fun. It's hard to take her seriously sometimes, and I personally struggle to treat her as an individual from main Tamamo. She's just not for me, D. Jean, however, is positively radiant. Her being voiced by Maya Sakamoto certainly helps. I would give her a B, but she's so useful in the game, I'll give her an A. Artemis, well, I've got nothing really against her, but she is kinda annoying whenever she's around, because it's like her entire character is beating up Orion. I suppose she can have a C. Caster Liz is just very boring to me. I've never really given her much thought. While I don't hate her, I do dislike her. E. Tamamo is wonderful, but I've never really liked her more than Nero. I think it's only fair I place her one tier down. B. I appreciate Francis Drake's charisma, and she's hella good in battle, but I'd say she's just personally not for me. No offense. D. Anne and Mary are kind of the same for me. One's too tiny, and the other's too thick for my taste. I wish they had moderation. D. Medea Lily is very pretty. I feel like she belongs with her regular self. C. Okita, now she's someone I love. The Shinsengumi are badass, and she's a solid saber. A. Nobu! She's kinda weird to me, personally. I've never really cared for her. I have to be honest with myself. D. Skahawk is easy, though. She's just so confident and cool that I fell for her design at first sight. Best Lancer ever. Yes. Santa Artoria is nice. There's not much to get excited about, but she is technically still Artoria Alter. I'll give her a B. Nursery Rhyme is a wonderfully creative character, but I've never really been a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. D. Jack the Lolly is a rather controversial one. Is she too young for her outfit? Yes. That said, I love her concept as a manifestation of aborted children, and I appreciate when she's drawn aged up. Even as a lolly, she still looks pretty cool to be honest. I'll give her a B. Now, I say that Artoria is my favorite character, and she is. But as far as I'm concerned, Mordred might as well as share that position. The two go hand in hand, plus Mordred is the ultimate sexy tomboy. S rank all the way. As far as the Tititorias go, I'm actually pretty salty. I hate the implication that my beloved Artoria would somehow naturally grow to be that busty, considering she's already a mature woman. Thankfully, the lore has my back, but I've still never preferred either design. All I can say is they're not for me. D. Fran is cute. I like Fran. She was my favorite berserker before Penthesilia came along. I'll give her a B for Berserker. Mysterious Heroine X is cool. I enjoy her final ascension design. That said, her story is very silly. She's a saber face though, so I'll give her a B. Brynhilde is a sweetheart. Who doesn't like a Valkyrie? B. Nero Bride is a weird one. As far as I'm concerned, she should have just been a different costume of regular Nero. I prefer her red dress to the Bride one though. She gets a B. So now we've got both Shiki and Void Shiki. Since Kara no Kyokai is one of my absolute favorite anime, it's no wonder I'll be giving Assassin Shiki an S rank. She is insanely cool. 
Saber Shiki, by comparison, has less of a defined personality. I prefer the jacket to her gorgeous kimono. She gets an A. Oh, Astolfo, you're such a charming lad. Technically, you're not a waifu, but I appreciate you all the same. And you can rock a bikini like the rest of them. I'll give him a B. While I can appreciate Nightingale's desire to help wounded people, she's always just been a bit mundane to me. D. Maeve, as wild as she is, is still smoking hot. As antagonistic as she is, I deem her worthy of a B. Elena Blavatsky is just kinda meh to me. I think it's because she hangs around Edison too much. D. Jalter's very easy to place. She goes hand in hand with Salter, as well as her vanilla form. A. Hundred Faced Hassan is fairly beautiful, but personally not my type. D. Irisfeel is very pretty. I like her outfit as well, but I don't feel too attached to her as a waifu. C. I think Shuten Doji will get the same rank. She's got a sultry voice and attitude, but she's a bit too far on the lowly end of things. C. Big Titty Monk is very much a delight, but she's kind of hard to take seriously because she's such a goofball. She can have a B, though. I understand a lot of people absolutely love Raiko, but for me personally, there is such a thing as being too busty, and she falls right in that category. D. Ibaraki, as far as I'm concerned, is just a really boring character. I don't dislike her, but I can't see her appeal at all. D. Nito Crease, on the other hand, is one of the hottest gals in the bunch. Her skin looks divine, and her outfit shows it off perfectly. Easily an S rank. Serenity is very pretty when she takes her mask off. I also like how innocent she is, despite being one of the Hassans. I give her a B. Da Vinci is a wonderful ally at Chaldea. Her greatest appeal comes from her appearance in the Babylonia anime, as I don't think her portrait does her justice. C. Summer Tamamo isn't really any different than classic Tamamo for me. She gets a B. Same goes for Summer Artoria. It's my ultimate waifu in a bikini. Again, an easy S rank. Summer Marie isn't that much different from regular Marie, but her summer form is a bit more exciting. She gets a C. Honestly, Summer Anne and Mary are in the exact same situation. C for them as well. Summer Mordred, like her daddy, gets an instant S rank. She's so fit and slim, and that tan. Mwah! Oddly enough, I prefer Skahawk in her regular form to her summer one, but nonetheless, she belongs in the S rank. Summer Kyo climbs up one more from her regular form with a C. Summer Martha is special. I've got a thing for fist fighters, and that pushes her up to rank A. Elia and Kudo fall into very much the same boat. I like Kudo's promiscuity. She's forward and aggressive, but at the end of the day, both girls are totally lollies, and my appreciation for them remains tied to their lore. They get a C. Brave Elizabeth is an exception to my typical disdain for the character. At the very least, I really like bikini armor, so she gets a B. Cleopatra's kind of a downer for me. I'm honestly just not a fan of the artist behind her and Danganronpa. Out of appreciation for how she looks in other styles, though, I'll give her a C. As another lolly, I'm afraid I must put Jean Alter Lily in the C category with Ilya and Kudo. In this case, the C is for cutie. Ishtar, however, is another of the hottest babes in the franchise. Reen in that outfit is to die for. Instant S. Enkidu slips into this list for being genderless, and while I have respect for that, I've never really found them to be waifu material. D for me. Quetzal Quotal was another of those servants that I didn't fully appreciate until the Babylonia anime. She's absolutely amazing in that, and because of it, I'll give her an A. Anna's another lolly. To the C category! So I really like Medusa, but I don't feel the same about Gorgon. She's a lot like Raiko to me, that being a bit too much woman for me to handle. That puts her in D. The same goes for Jaguar Man. Taiga can definitely be hot, but her in the onesie, with the Jaguar's personality, makes her a step too annoying. D. Tiamat is pretty. Oh! As a beast of humanity, I think she's fairly decent. Her voice is nice too. She gets a C. There's just so much to love about Musashi. 
she's got that vibrant blue outfit with a navel peak, dual wielding swords, and a cool way of entering the story. She is hands down an S rank. Mysterious Heroine X Alter, to me, is not as cool as her regular form, perhaps because she seems like the quiet type. She gets a C. Cha Cha falls right in with no book. It just aren't for me. D. It's time for some Sakuras. Meltrilis is nice. I love how caring she is throughout the CCC event. She gets a B. As for Lip and BB, they each get Cs. Suzuka Gozen is much better in my opinion, especially in her final ascension. I must have a bias for sabers. She gets an A. I'm gonna bundle these two Kiaras together. They're essentially the same person. As pretty as she is, she's a step too insane for me. D. Scheherazade gets the same rank. She's oddly frail and cowardly. It is built like a tank. I'm just not feeling the combination. D. Wu Zetian is another lolly. In her case, though, I'm just not that interested. D. I love me some Amazons. Abtastic with powerful fury. Don't let her hear this, but Penthesilia is beautiful. I give her an A. Paul Bunyan is mostly just a joke character for me. I can't take her seriously at all as a waifu. D. Summer Nero is still Nero as far as I'm concerned. A. It's nice seeing Fran in some summer attire. She gets a B. Summer Nito Crease is fantastic when she's not hiding behind her medjed cloak. She keeps the S. I still don't really get the appeal of Nobu yet. I'm sorry, she stays in D. In contrast, I'm gonna send Summer Salter to S rank, where she belongs. Best rider I've ever had. Summer Elena is a step up from her normal form. She's quite cute in her bikini. See? Raiko also steps up in her summer form. Her jugs are still as intimidating, but her school uniform kinda tugs at me. See? Summer Ishtar is quite a disappointment for me. That jacket in the summertime is a major bummer. She gets a C. Parvati is gorgeous. I think the fashion really suits Sakura. She gets an A. Tomoe Gozen is more badass than sexy, but there's no reason the two don't complement each other. I'd give her a B. Chiyome is a bit stranger. Even after making Shimosa's lore, I don't feel too connected to her as a character. She's pretty though, and I give her a B. Kato Danzo, the Robo Milf, is especially lovely. She's definitely an A. As for Osaka Behime, I can appreciate her being a shut in and such, but she's missing the kind of charm that, say, Futaba in Persona 5 has. D. The whole Mecha Elizabeth thing just rubs me the wrong way. I find their inclusion straight up annoying. E. Cersei is a sweetie. I can see why Odysseus got stuck on her island. She gets an A. Netza seems like someone who's very reliable. That said, I've never been too excited for her. C. The Queen of Sheba is also normally not my type, but I think those ears perk me up that extra bit. C. Abby is a real sweetheart, but a waifu she is not. I feel obligated to give her a D. Not the D, mind you. Pervs. Huh, are Eshkigals all the way down here? Contrary to what a lot of people seem to think, I don't feel she's in the same league as Ishtar. There are just enough subtleties in her design that I'm just not as excited by. She gets a B. Altera is hot. Santa Altera is just cute. C for her. Hokusai is fairly mundane to me, but I do like her boldness when it comes time for combat. She lets it all loose. Fitting for one so close to tentacles. B. Semiramis is cool. I respect her sincerity and devotion to Amakusa Shiro in Apocrypha, but personally the best I can give her is a C. Same goes for Fujino. She deserves all the kindness and love in the world, but she hasn't quite stolen my heart. C. Anastasia is similar. Dare I say her personality seems so cold that I can't really relate to her? D. Atalante Altar, for being this gorgeous beast woman, is a definite upgrade from before. She gets an A. Okita Altar is neat. She's not quite as interesting as her base form, though. Maybe it's the shoes. B. As I said before, who doesn't like a Valkyrie? What's more, there's three of them in a single servant. Easy A rank. Okay, so Scavi is a wonderful caster. 
That said, surprisingly, I don't like her as much as I do Skahawk. It's mostly gut reaction. I give her a B. Summer Jean is John. She gets an A. I still don't really get the appeal of Ibaraki. D. Summer Ushi, to me, is just a step down from the amazing outfit she had by default. Instead of an S, I give her an A. Jalter, on the other hand, gets an upgrade for her summer form. Katanas and bikinis really match. S rank, baby! Summer BB also gets me hot and bothered. She gets an A. Summer Maeve is more or less the same. She can keep her B. Mysterious Heroine XX, while she starts in a mech suit, breaks out to easily be an A tier waifu. C tonight looks cuddly, but not really waifu material for me. D. Caster Shuten is pretty much the same as regular Shuten for me. C. Chin Liang Yu is cool. I just kind of wish she had more flair to her design. She gets a B. Yumei Ren provides the exact kind of flair I'm talking about. She's one of my favorites. Straight to the top with S. Following up strong is Bradamante. The fact that she was designed by the Xenoblade 2 artist really makes her special to me. S as well. Samba Kets is a strange one, though. Her outfit is actually too ridiculous for me to take seriously. Not my thing, D. Benny Enma is cute, but I've never for a moment thought of her as a waifu, D. Miyu can hang with her other magical girls in C. Murasaki, for me, falls alongside Raiko, being just too busty for my taste. She's more elegant than hot for me, D. King Protea is adorable, but she kind of falls into the same category as Passion Lip. C. Kama is odd because she starts as a lolly and ascends to be more mature. If I go by her final ascension, I think she's worthy of a B. Rhinez gets her charm from her smug and witty personality. I like it, but she could use a few more years. C. I really, really wanted to love Aluvia's servant. But the art just throws me off so much, I kind of have to give it a D. Gray, however, gets much more love. I'd say A. Ganesha. Well, there's a serpent I wish I didn't have to look at. To each their own. But from the moment I saw Jinako that portly, I've disliked the design. E. Let it be said that I know next to nothing about Lakshmi Bai, but visually she's very similar to Okita. I kind of feel obligated to give her an A. Even in Demon King form, I don't much care for Nobunaga. D. As far as I'm concerned, Nagao Kagetora looks very similar to Tomoe Gozen. I'll give her a B. Ryder Da Vinci is very cute. I love her facial expressions and wish they were on the adult Da Vinci. Thanks to that, I think I'll give her a C. I'm very glad to see Gareth as a servant and as a female, no less. I haven't gotten to that part in FGO. She seems fun, but as of this video, I don't think I can go higher than a C. Charlotte Corday is another servant I'm just not too familiar with. I have nothing against her, but the big bell dress just isn't my thing. D. Salome, however, has me wrapped around her finger. Wowza, she's gorgeous! Her veil is an especially nice touch. A all the way. Even better is Summer Musashi. She's the ultimate red, white, and blue beauty with a friggin' gun blade. Instant S. Osaka Behime really seems to have come out of her shell in the summer. Her stage 3 ascension blows me away. Definitely an A. Summer Carmilla has also really impressed me. She's far less scary, and I like it. She gets a B. Summer Hokusai also gets a B. Very nice. So you already know I don't care for Tiditoria. So consider it a compliment when I give her summer form a C. Aside from her first penguin form, I think Lambda is a fair match for Melt. B. Summer Okita, however, deserves even more love. S rank! Space Ishtar also has my heart, particularly her Han Solo attire. That midriff wins the S rank. Calamity Jane is right behind her at rank A. I can't wait for this event. Oddly enough, I actually prefer Astolfo's regular form. I'll give his saber form a C. Nightingale putting on a Santa hat still isn't winning me over, sadly. Maybe I'm just not into nurses. D. Europa's very nice. 
I'm not too excited about her, but she is pretty. I say a B. Yang Guifei, just looking at her design, seems like a more boring version of Hokusai. I'll go ahead and give her a C. Say Shogunon looks fun in her first ascension, but gets a bit over-designed in further stages. Best I can do is a C. Dioscuri, more specifically Pollux, is really appealing to me. I want to learn more about her. She gets an A. Canis seems pretty cool. I'm undecided how I feel about the character, but she is rather stunning. I'll give her a B. Now, the last waifu image I have here is Kijio Koyo, who's hilarious because her first stage is as a dinosaur. I'm not into that, but thankfully she has a humanoid form too. I'm not a huge fan of giant kibono, but in her case, I'll give her a C. JP has a handful more waifu that have yet to appear on this list. Without being formally included, I'll just say that Summer Kiara gets an A, Eris Utsumi gets a B, Summer Tomoe gets an A, Summer Murasaki stays in D, Himiko gets a B, Van Gogh gets a D, Ibuki Doji gets an E, Fritra gets a B, Taira no Kagekiyo gets a C, Kiichi Hogan gets an A, and Karin gets a C. Obviously, this has been a ton of servants to cover. To make life easier for you in the comments, I'm most excited to hear about two things, your personal S ranks and your E ranks. In other words, your most and least favorite waifu servants. Also, do you want more of this? I could have Arichan, my wife, go through all her favorite fate men. Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or let's play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!